I'm Lana Jones with BlueBunnyHollow.com. Today I'll be showing you how to use my continuous line quilting designs so you can create amazing projects from a border and accent sashing to a pillow, placemat, centerpiece, wall hanging, or quilt. You can adjust the size if needed, but don't enlarge the design as big as the hoop can handle, as you need some wiggle room should you have to use technology in your machine to adjust the angle of the design so the needle hits both ends of the line you have drawn. I will show this to you later in the video. There are many hoops and hoop sizes on the market today for our domestic and multi-needle machines. The standard hoops that come with the machine can definitely be used for continuous line quilting. Many machine manufacturers also have magnetic hoops as an option. There are aftermarket magnetic hoops such as the dime magnetic snap hoop I am using today that are made for both domestic and multi-needle machines. It comes with four adhesive centering rulers that can be placed on each side of the hoop. However, you will see that I don't have those on my hoop. I prefer just to scratch in the center mark on each side. To prepare this hoop and all of my standard hoops, I put double-sided permanent tape on the back side of the top hoop, as in the dime magnetic snap hoop, or on the back side of the inner hoop for the standard hoops. This helps to hold my fabric in place while I hoop. I take the tape out of the plastic dispenser and place it into the table dispenser. Much easier to apply the tape without it wrapping around my finger. Place the tape on all four sides along the length of each side. Depending on the fabric, the tape can be used for multiple hoopings before adding new tape. I don't take off the old tape until I have several layers built up. Then I remove the layers and put on fresh tape. Layer your quilt top, batting and backing. I will be using white fabric so you can see what I'm doing. Then spray base the layers. We don't want to pin them since the pins could get in the way of hooping. Draw a centering line where the quilting will be. This can be a mark as you see in the sashing piece I'm creating or it can be a seam line that you are following to stay straight. Place the top or inner hoop in the center of the project, matching the marks of the hoop to the drawn line. If your project is large, roll it up so you can lift the fabric and the hoop at the same time. Lift the quilt and hoop with one hand, center and slide the bottom metal part of the hoop underneath, pushing it all the way as far as it will go then lower the upper hoop. If you have a domestic machine, the connector will be here when you slide the lower metal part under the quilt. Now check the sides to make sure that the top and bottom are even. You can feel if one of the hoops are a bit off. Not a huge deal if you're doing a small design, but if your design gets close to the edge, you don't want the needle to hit the metal. Since I can see part of the upper hoop here, I will just slide it a bit to straighten it out. Then I will check the sides to do the same if needed. Because the quilt is basically taped to the top hoop, it will hold the fabric while you slide it. When I turn this back over, the drawn line is still perfect with the center marks. We still may need to tweak where the needle hits the drawn line at the machine. This technique gets us close, which puts us in tweakability range. Then we use technology for perfection. If you are using a domestic or multi-needle machine and have the technology, read your manual to see what to do to properly position your design. For instance, if you have a Foff or Viking, you have precise positioning, which I think is the best positioning tool on any machine. Learn to use this. You will love it. You may have a machine with a camera. This is also great technology to help you line up the design. Or you may have an icon that looks like this one. Center left is selected, which is where all my continuous line quilting designs start. Perfect for seeing if I'm lined up with my drawn line. Once I line up the left side, I can touch the center right icon to see if I am good 
on the right side. If you have a domestic machine, turn the hand wheel to see if the needle hits the line. If it does, great. If it does not, raise the needle back up and use the movement icon to tweak until the needle hits the line. Repeat for the other side. If you have a multi-needle machine, touch the thread cutter and watch the needle while it does the thread cut to see if it hits the line. If it does, great. If it doesn't, touch the arrow of the movement icon in the direction you need to go and then do the same for the right side. If your machine does not have technology, then go to the first stitch to see if you hit the line. Adjust if needed, then go to the last stitch to see if you hit the line. I do not try to angle the design because of how I hooped. I'm so dang close that trying to get the right angle would take a while. So instead, I just gently tug on the upper frame a tad bit in the direction it needs to go. Then check to see if the needle hits the line. When you start, if you have the domestic machine, pull the bobbin thread to the top of the quilt before starting. This keeps the back tidy. After the first design has stitched, unhoop the quilt. Decide if you're going to go to the right or going to the left. It doesn't matter. You can eyeball the placement of the center, which is fine if you're doing a smaller design. However, if your design is larger, it is best to make sure you are centered properly so you do not have to unhoop to adjust if you are too close to one side or the other. The best way to do this is with a template. The template paper I'm using here is called Print and Stick Target Paper from Dime. This is a translucent paper so you can see through it for placement. It is adhesive and can be used multiple times. Place the print and stick target paper into your printer. Print the design by either using your software to print the template or use the PDF included with this set. Make sure you put the paper in your printer the proper way. Print on the textured side of the paper. Roughly cut out the template. I do like to cut right next to the last stitch on the left and right. Not necessary, but if I'm using a light colored thread, it does help. Remove the protective paper from the back of the template and keep this to put the template on to store for the next use. Now place the template on the project, lining up the last stitch of the quilt with the first stitch of the template. Now hoop as we did before and place the hoop into the embroidery machine. Line up the start and end needle points as we did for the first hooping and embroider the second design. Repeat until you have the project complete. Remember, the bigger the design choice, the less hoopings you have to do. Here is an example of one of the smaller designs versus one of the larger designs in the same size hoop. I did flip the second row for variety. Some options would be to fill the hoop with the small designs as I did in the previous example and use it for a placemat or a pillow. Thank you for joining me today and enjoy your sewing adventures. <music>